like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. This is our regular town council meeting for September the 9th. The uh, invocation and pledge of allegiance will be led by council member Holly Crafton Way. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for this town and this opportunity for all of us to come together to work on the business of our town. I pray, Lord, you will be with us tonight um, as we make decisions and that you will guide us um, in those decisions, Lord. Lord, I pray for those um, in our community that are sick, that are struggling, that need you, Lord. I pray that you will be with each one of them um, and show them your grace and your peace. Lord, I pray for our fire, our police, our EMS, all of our first responders, that you will be with them as they serve our community. And Lord, I pray for our military, both home and abroad. I pray that you will be with them, their families, and return them safely home. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have before you tonight, tonight's agenda. Uh, anybody wants to add or need to take something off? Speak now. If not, we'll need a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So move. Have so, a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed say no. Motion <clears throat> is carried unanimous. Approval of the regular meeting minutes and closed session minutes. I move that we approve the regular meeting minutes and the closed session minutes. I have a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed say no. That motion is carried unanimous. Citizens request and comments. So I would like to give a brief update on the dog park and the restrooms going into the Pocket Parks Union Street um, in Rosewald. Uh, so for the dog park, we're finished our grading, site prep, and demolition. Um, sidewalks, dog vestibules, as well as parking lot have been finished. Um, internal and external property line fencing is almost complete. Um, restrooms have been completed. They will be on site at the dog park next month. Um, once the restroom is installed, we'll have our exterior gate installed. And then the final uh, steps will include amenities um, as well as landscaping. Uh, we do hope to have the park open in early spring of 2025. Obviously, we'll open sooner if ready. That's just a um, time frame for date. Um, the Rosenwald and Union Street parks, those restrooms are also finished. Uh, we have a date of November for install. Uh, we are at the mercy of the county. Those cannot open until they are uh, inspected. And I can take any questions you have. Pickleball court. Uh, bids are out or open right now. Um, don't quote me on the day. That will close later on uh, this month. And then you guys will see that in the packet next month. Uh, question on the, the dog park, you're talking about landscaping, is that going to include that ugly hill? That's the entire property. Okay. It will take some time. You're talking about outside the, the property, correct? The hill that, yep. that's on Providence Mill? Providence Mill, yes. Or I'm sorry, water plant, it's on water plant. Yep. Okay. There's it looks some, horrible, that's yep. what I was asking. The whole, I mean, and once you look at it from Providence Mill or water plant road, there's obviously work that needs to get done and will get done. But that the the parts that's outside of the dog park area will take the longest. Right. To, I just want to make sure it was included. Yep. And are we having a fall festival? Are we going to yes. talk about that later? Oh, yes. we're going to talk about it later. Okay. So we can talk about it later. If you have any questions, I'll take those now. But that's the first Saturday old. in October, oh, and we're going to start flooding Facebook uh, very shortly. 
Um, everything will be the same as previous years with the exception of instead of a cruise in uh, car show this year, I do not have a car show in its place. Um, they have 2020, they went from a car show to a cruise in um, and I don't have a replacement for that for this year. Everything else will be um, the same as previous years. Are you taking applications for vendors now? Yes, we have a few spots left. We've been taking them since, um, quote me on the day, sometime in the middle of summer. Okay. But we do have spots remaining. And is that online or can they, do they come? They do the that in, in person. They fill out their okay. form here. Um, we've had some folks in the past that have come from a little bit further away. We've worked with them to get those forms turned in. They come in. here to do the form? They do room? come here, yeah. Okay, town hall. Got it. And that includes... Um, Type yes, leaders. yeah, food and food and craft is, okay. is what you would be. I had a couple people ask me about it, that's why. I was yeah, we have a couple spots remaining, and those um, the information to those vendors will be sent out the week of the, the fall fest. Okay, tractor pull good, tractor pull is on. <laughs> <laughs> They're very excited. Um, I, I think we've already been working on the track a little bit. Pageant's on, pageant is on. Just real quick, while Keaton's up there, I think it's always important to recognize the hard work of the employees. Are, they are our greatest asset. And uh, most recently, uh, Keaton uh, was able to obtain the certification park and rec professional. Uh, went to Charlotte, took, took some tests, and was successful. And so I just want to let you know we appreciate you hard, all, all the hard work and dedication you do to get there. Thank you. Congratulations. Good. Good. Thank you, Keaton. Oh, Keaton, let, one more question, please. Is the air conditioning completed over the gym? So, if you go into the gymnasium for volleyball tonight, you will feel air conditioning. We have not passed our final inspection through the county. So, they are technically not, not done yet, but they, okay. that will be closing out very shortly. Yes. Good. Thank you. And while you're up there, I want to ask one more question instead of having you come back up. And I think you guys were working on that. There's been some rumbling in the community about lack of some programs like cheering and stuff and can you just update on where we stand because I'm, I'm here and getting mm -hmm. emails and calls about it so yeah I can give you a very brief yeah just for tonight's reference yeah um, so basically pre-2020 um, the Parks Department did not do a cheer program there was a person in the community that offered a cheer alongside of our program so it was never rec sponsored. It was never. It's okay. never been a rec sponsored thing. But in in 2020, she basically called me and said, "I'm. I'm she didn't have any kids in the program. She was doing it as a volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, she said she was going to step aside. Um, we, the Parks Department, found a volunteer in 2021 and 2022. Um, things were a little rocky. So what we did was we did a first ever cheer program which was kind of a hybrid in between a athletic program mm -hmm. and a camp. And so it was kind of like a late summer camp and then you got okay. some extra cheer events through our fall season. Okay, thank you. So in in the future, I mean, I think what, what I've heard about the, the cheering thing, they're not really interested in competition teams. They want their kids just to be able to go out to the Little League football games. Mm -hmm and cheer mm -hmm. that's that's their interest um can we consider having a cheer program just for that not a competition team yeah. um the the concern was from people that spoke to me about it, is the cost when you get with a competition team mm -hmm. and so they're wanting their children to have the opportunity to cheer but they can't afford the competition piece yeah so just as a, as a background of, of where our program stands and where some of the other ones, because here's what's happened. We, people will always compare our program, whether it's through the Parks Department or not, as a parks program, and then they will always compare it to what else is available. So we play in the Catawba Valley Football League. It's five organizations currently. Other organizations do run cheer through their program, and they do a high level, like a more competitive base, $150, and full uniform, multiple practices per week, a very different type of, of program that people will always compare it to. Um, this is something that went to the Rec Advisory Committee. We've talked about it for a long time. How do we offer something 
with being able to hit a price point that's uh, affordable, but yet, um, you know, get, gets everybody um, uh, an opportunity to participate. Um, so our program is $10, and they're able to cheer um, at some of the games, they're able to get some practices, and they're able to do like a camp type experience. Right. And we've gotten a good response from that. Are we gonna, um, you know, no matter what we choose, there's going to be people that don't, um, it doesn't fall under their desired program. Um, we just try to do the best we can. In, in the future, we can bring it back to the recreation committee and our advisory committee and see if there's something else that we can do differently. Um, and that's kind of our, our plan moving, moving forward. Well, I think that's creating. Uh, I mean, I think what they really want is opportunity to cheer at, at the Little League game. So that, yeah. that's creating that opportunity with mm -hmm. that camp, and it's affordable. Yeah. Uh, so the, the last two, two years that we've done that, this year and last year, we've had about 60 girls participate. And of those, not all of them choose to do both, you know, experiences. And then a lot of them choose to do something else as well. So we also offer in the fall, um, we also offer soccer and volleyball mm -hmm. and about a quarter roughly this season I didn't look at last season do both of those options whereas if you were to do another I'm going to say the word competitor but another uh, organization in our uh, football division if you were to do their cheer you would that's it you would not be able to do multiple programs yeah that makes sense yeah I mean I want to create opportunities I mean because Maiden is really become known for cheerleading over you know the past several years winning several competitions so <laughs> I, I don't want us to lose that I mean we may not always mm -hmm. be the best but I want to keep that interest there correct you know because when they get the middle school high school level I mean it's completely different and they have that interest early they'll know if they're going to have that interest in middle school mm -hmm. or high school so yeah I like the idea though that you're doing that. keeping it affordable Real quick, just to mention a few things. Anna, if you'll see, it should be in front of your seat there was a pamphlet. Anna had the idea of creating those. It's to, we've been giving them out to people who move into the community. I thought it was a great idea. Uh, so if you want to keep those, you can, or you can get it back to her either way. Um, and then lastly, um, Mary Maiden, Anna, again, is all over that, uh, organizing, getting people signed up, vendors and whatnot. If you have someone or suggestions that maybe that, we, we may be forgetting about, please let somebody know and we'll see if we can't accommodate that. Do we have that date? December 12th. I'm sorry? December 12th. Okay, thank you. Have, I'm sorry, Mary. I'm going to shut up if you don't let you call. Have we, <laughs> have, have we reached out to churches in the community to see if they have an interest in um, doing food? I mean, like it used to be years ago, mostly it was churches doing food. Yes, Andrew. we've gotten um, a response. I'm not sure. I think three or four churches so Good. far in the community. And um, Mark Baker is helping me uh, with community contacts because he knows a lot of those. So he's helping me reach out to churches and other community-type places. So that's what, if y'all have any suggestions about those that you think would be interested. Okay. Me and Mark are working on community people. I think that's what's going to bring our crowd if the churches are involved. Yes, mm -hmm. we've already gotten, a local crowd. Yeah, so. we've already gotten a few yeses from some of them, and then waiting to hear back from a few more. So good. Yep. So Black Church see. doing the um, nativity yeah. scenes again. They're confirming their dates, but we've talked to them, and they think it's going to line up how it, it normally does. All right, if they do that, we'll serve cookies at our house. Okay. For people just to kind of like out there at the sidewalk. Yeah. Okay. Did that a few years ago. There's Things have changed a little bit, but if we can do it, we we enjoy doing that. Yep. So. They're saying that they're good to go. Okay. Just making sure yep. about the dates, All right, but they're going to have it. They said. Good evening. Good evening to the board and the town and the town manager, Tracy. Thanking God for just being able to stand. I'm talking a little bit about the citizen of Mary Holloway Henry. One of the citizens wants to know. Let me back up and pick it back on Keith. What he said. If I'm out of order, let me know. I need to know about. I know you hear talking about the bathroom, but I want to know about the surface and the look of the parks, the way the water is flowing on top of Roosevelt Park. I know you discussed that, but you, uh, in the last uh, meeting, uh, under Todd, then, but I want to know 
if Keith can give me some highlights out here, y'all can tell me what else you're going to do down there in Roosevelt Park outside putting up a bathroom. Yeah, if Keith can make an expand on that. Yes, it's the, yeah. see I had made that remark to uh, Todd that the, both of those um, pavement has to look like it need to be resurfaced. So where are we at with that? That's currently out for bid. That'll be in next month's um, package for the whole Okay. Thank you. Also, um, uh, one of the citizens wants to know about, uh, are y'all planning on trimming any trees? off the lines or something, because some of the citizens, citizens down that way is one if you're going to do any tree trimming. Yes. Yes, that's good. When? When? We do it late fall, early spring. Okay. When the leaves are off. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Council. Mark T. Garden with Local Maiden Info. Just wanted to say real quick, uh, thanks to everybody for looking out for us and looking us up because we've had a lot of a lot of views and a lot of suggestions for stories. I want to thank uh, Parks and Rec Keaton. We did an interview and had a story about the dog park coming up, and it was uh, a lot of views there, so a lot of interest going forward so we have a lot of things that we're planning to do we have some things in the works that almost complete and uh, we have a newcomers page coming out for all the new folks coming to town we have it's also an outreach page for people that are looking to maybe move to maiden they can find out information about maiden and why do they want to move here and uh, you know just things like that so it's uh it's moving forward and upward so we're just happy to be here <laughs> thank you all right thank you Mark. <clears throat> i'd like to thank the mayor the council and the city manager for allowing us to be here tonight. Most of you know my name, I'm Rick Lawling. I'm actually a director at the Living Word Church, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about the Hope Center Ministries. I'll tell you a little about the history, and then I'm gonna have someone else come up. But probably two years ago, our pastor, Brad Davis, came to our council and presented a thing about the Hope Center Ministries. And most of you know I'm very boisterous about what I believe, and I told them we didn't need that. We didn't need we had enough problems in our church and things to take care of, and we didn't need it. But you know, God has a way of working on your heart and your mind. He opened doors in my heart that I didn't even know were there. He had some things happen in my wife's family with drug rehab, and it just opened my eyes. <clears throat> so he brought it back up again, and of course I was the one that carried the banner, and I was the chairman of it. So our church had to raise $200,000 to get into this, this program where they're going to come in later and invest a million dollars. So we raised that $200,000 in about, I think it was about three months, we raised the $300,000, $200,000. And during that time period, I've never talked to so many people when we started bringing it in the community about people that had drugs and alcohol addictions in their families, their friends, their everybody. I even had an undertaker tell me, Rick, if there's somebody under 30, if you read in the paper that passed away, it was a very high percentage, like 60 or 70 percent was more that probably was drug related. And I know, well, Tracy can tell with the police department here, I mean, there's a great need in our community and it's getting worse. So what we're trying to do, Brian Horton, he'll come up, he's with the Hope Center Ministry. He's a regional director. He also has a house in Galax, Virginia. I don't know how many years he's been over it, but He's going to tell you a little bit about the program. Thank you, Council. Appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Brian Horton. I'm from Galax, Virginia. I'm the regional director for Hope Center Ministries. 
Hope Center Ministry started in 2007 right outside of Nashville, uh, Tennessee, when a uh, pastor had a friend of his that was in the hospital from an overdose. He uh, went and he talked to him, and his name is Pastor Josh Hanna. And what he handed you was just some information about our program, some financial, how we, how we operate and all that stuff. We're a 501c3 nonprofit, so everything goes right back into right back into the men and women that we are trying to help. He started this program. It's a 12-month, year-long program. Um, the first 30 days you come in, we're helping you get back to reality. The next nine months, 10 months, we're helping you get a job. We're helping you start providing for your family. We believe in a hand up, not a hand out. We believe that the only way we're going to change our, our, the problems that we have is by training them and showing them that there is a better way. Uh, so what we do is they, we get a job somewhere and then they work through the program. They live 24 seven on campus, They're not allowed to have cell phones. They're not allowed to drive. We take care of all that. We have a lot of court ordered people. Right now we have a, a person that's been in this area helping and we've took 60 people from this area and sent them to other, other rehab, I mean to our rehabs in other states. Tennessee, Virginia, North Carolina. We have several in North Carolina. Um, so we've had 60 people. So we know everybody in here has been touched by addiction by some way or somehow. And it's, it's more and more every day. And so what we want to do is we want to help that. You know, Pastor Brad and, and Rick and, and uh, all of them there, they raised the money. We've known them for a long time, been friends with them. Uh, Dunn, North Carolina has a men's center. Goldsboro, North Carolina has a men's center. Goldsboro, North Carolina has a women's center. Um, Salem, Salem, however you say that, Salam, S-A-L-E-M-A, -E has a women's center. Princeton has a men's center, Princeton, North Carolina. Getting ready to open one in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, and so we're, we're growing. We've got 52 campuses in the United States right now, not counting what we have overseas. Um, so we have, uh, we have a wide variety, but what we'd like to do is we come in and we find a house that fits our model. And so we put 32 residents in that house. They've got a night monitor who is there full time, and we have two staff members there all day long. I'm a director in my center. I have 34 men in my center in Galax. And so they're all going to their jobs during the day. We have vans, we provide that, there's no cars at the house, none of that kind of stuff. They're all riding with us. We drug test weekly. We drug test randomly. We, uh, you know, we're helping restore families. We do a family support. One of the greatest stories I have, and I'll just share with you for just a moment, was a young man that come into my center. He had been in jail for eight months and he was, he was in his 40s. And him and his wife, she had a restraining order against him because he had been had beat her while he was on drugs. She was on drugs, she was in jail. They had lost custody of all three of their kids. His sister had. He comes into my program and he stays there for a year. Two months into the program, he says, I'm gonna get my family back. Now, his wife has graduated, he's graduated Hope Center Ministries, Galax, Virginia. His wife has graduated Hope Center, Whitfield, Virginia. She's a director of Hope Center in Whitfield, Virginia. Their, their marriage is back together. They've got all three kids back together. This has been going on for two years. So God's a restorer. And so what Satan wants to do is try to destroy all of our young people. Yes. And it's just the way it is. So we're here to, we're here to help. We want to be here. This is, you know, Galax, Virginia is a lot like Maiden, North Carolina. It's a small town. I grew up there. I run a grocery store for 25 years. My grandparents started it in the 60s. In 2019, my best friend died of an overdose because he had shoulder surgery and got hooked on pain pills. I was a youth pastor at that time, and God called me out and said, this is what you're going to do. And so ever since then, we, this is what I've done. My wife is in the ministry as well. So do you have any questions, anything I can answer? Um, we just kind of want to lay it on the table. we got to go before the planning commission, zoning, planning commission and get all that stuff squared away. But does anybody have any questions for me? What, what's your timeline for being 
I mean, I know you've got a lot to plan, but like, what are you thinking? A year, six months, two years? Uh, we would like to be open first quarter next year. Okay. So, I mean, it's possible. Okay. Absolutely. We've done got the money raised. They put in 200000 We come in, we'll add another one to $1.1 $1. 1 million. That's, That's fantastic. We've tried to find a house that meets our model. It's got to have, you know, we go by the codes and zoning. We do all that. We work with the county. We don't try to fight none of that stuff. We're not trying to skimp. We want to, we do everything for the good of our residents is our core value. So we want to make sure they're safe. So that's what we do. So that's a rather large house then mm -hmm. to, to house that. Try to find something around 6,000 square foot or bigger. Okay. Because you've got to have for the 50 square foot per bedroom per person. So. Okay. So you're looking for a location or you're considering building a location? We're looking for a location. We've actually found a location that, and to be honest, I don't know the address and all that kind of stuff. Rick will. He's been working with them. But we've found a location. Okay. I was going to say, you got a really good realtor there to work with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good salesman for sure. <laughs> So I, I would say thank you for what you're doing. I, yeah. I worked in addictions for 25 years, and I know how exhausting, mentally exhausting it is. Yeah, um, sure. To see those same faces over, fail repeatedly, and you put your heart and soul into it. So I, I know. I've, I've rode that bus a long time. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm interested in how people get into this program. I mean, is it insurance based? Is it Medicaid based? Is it what what? So it'll cost you one time seven hundred dollar fee to get in. So most of the time, when you're in when you're in addiction, you've lost everything. You've burned every bridge. Exactly. You can't get. Mm -hmm. And so we have we also have a sponsorship for that. So we have churches and local churches that say, you know what, I'll pay seven hundred dollars for the next person or whatever. That's all it ever cost them. And we'll actually give them a check for $700 the day they graduate, give it back to them. While they're in the program, during their vocational training, which we call work, but that's what pays for their program. The last two months of their program, they are making their own money. They're still living on campus. We're still providing transportation. We're providing all that stuff. And then they get to save their money. Most of them graduate with around five to $6,000 in a checking account if they are smart with it which we teach them Dave Ramsey, money management, all these things so that we can help them. We try to get them where they get to a place where they're not dependent on EBT, where they're not dependent on the, all the things that they've been raised in. Yes? Britain, I went to Ukraine several years ago. This same model they used in the Ukraine that the churches would draft, and the success rate was like unbelievable. What's your success rate based on what? 67%. 67% success rate. That's amazing. Maybe 10% or yeah, something like right. that. It's somewhere else. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the model. I mean, I'm going to say it. It's God. It's using God. They use, they use the Bible. That's what they get these people instilled in their head. Yeah. And that's what it takes. Yeah. But it works. Now, we've seen it work in Ukraine. So I know it works. And it's consistency. I mean, staying in yeah. the program and staying consistent. Mm -hmm. That's. Yeah. That's the struggle for a lot of treatment programs. It is. So, um, how would how would one go about getting into program? I mean, is that is it a, like a hospital referral? We have an application. Make, we have an application process. Anybody it's simple. can apply. Anybody can apply. There's only two things that keeps you from getting in. One is your you have sex sex charges, sexual crime, whatever. The other one is if you've committed murder or anything to that nature. But everything else is, you're okay as long as you meet the, if you're on disability, we can't take you just because of our insurance and the way we do, but we have uh, referrals that we send everyone with disability on. We already have a man in this area, we've already hired him, he's living in actually, he's just living in, he's in Hilltown. He's living in um, Lenore? Lenore, but he's, he's working down here with our county. He, he plays Twenty-six people in various centers across wow. the southeast this past month. In one month. Mm -hmm. So when you get if, when you get here and mm -hmm. get going and all that good stuff, I I've got some play some great resources for mm -hmm. you as far as peer support and that type of thing. Yeah. Um, 
just people that have been specialists in the in the in addictions for a yeah. long time um, that are good people. So I mean, I just want to put that out there. I can yep. I can provide you with some support and resources when you. And that's what we look for. We look for people that maybe have been through the same thing that are you know living their life in recovery. Someone that's you know, and then they can speak into other people's lives. So we we do use a lot of volunteers in our program. But anything else? Just want to say thank you because that is, that is very important. I know yeah. we keep striving on the same thing, but everybody in here has a somebody that's addicted, yeah. and that can hit home hard. Mm -hmm. It really can. Um, True. I had an aunt that died from drug addiction. Yeah, it's um, it don't it don't matter who you are, no matter what age you are. That's right. uh, we see so many people this this meth addiction that's going on, the people making this stuff, and the fentanyl that's coming across and going into each community. And I mean, we're just it's uh, we've got to take a stand, and we feel like that's where God's called us. Uh, to, to take that stand. Uh, we are unapologetically believe that Jesus Christ is the only way that we can find true recovery, the only way that we can find true freedom from addiction. And so that's what, that's what we do. Do we still let our guys go to the hospital or go to the doctor if they need stuff? Yes. We're not holding them in. You know what I'm trying to say. Right. We, let, we still go to the doctor and all that kind of stuff and if they need medicine. Uh, everybody that comes in is already detoxed. So you don't have to worry about any kind of detox, anything like that going on in the community. All that's done medically. Do, do you take them with methadone or suboxone? They cannot have methadone or suboxone so while they're in our program. they have to be program. cleared from mm -hmm. that. That's yep. going to be a struggle. You already know that. Yeah, it is. But, you know, what we're finding out is, and I've been in this ministry for five years, um, been in ministry since 2007. But what I've found is, this methadone and this suboxone that, that we're giving guys and women now, coming off of that is harder than this other stuff that they're buying. Very hard. And so, you know, um, we believe that we believe that you know there is an answer. And it's expensive. Huh? It's expensive. It's expensive, yeah, it's for sure. It's very expensive for people. Yep. So, do, do you do alcohol detox too? Mm -hmm. Yep. Alcohol and drugs. <clears throat> So, Rick, will you keep us updated as you guys progress through this? I have one more question. I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. I, this is my last one. You're good. Um, what about mental illness? If they've been diagnosed with mental illness, those sometimes those addictions and yeah. mental illness go hand in hand. For sure. You, would you treat them still? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And we have a list of medication that we accept and we'll, we allow and so that we stick by that every center in the United States. And so most of the time, or I'm not gonna say most of the time, hundred percent of the time there's a prescription drug on there that you can use that fits in there that's not one that can be abused. Yeah. And so that's what we find so much of the time. Is you know, the abusive behavior stays. It takes fourteen it's proven fact it takes twelve to fourteen months for someone's mind to clear up enough to find freedom from addiction. And so that's the reason we do a year program. Most of the time we have guys, they stay in the program, they start working for us. We've got n numerous people in the ministry <coughs> that work for us. I've actually done talk to two people that want to be director and recovery pastor here in this area. We've done interviewed them and talked to them. So, How are you getting, um, setting up medical treatment for, for these people, meaning like, if people from this area or people went to Galax, Virginia, they're not going to be in the area where a provide, a non, their known provider is. Mm -hmm. how, how do you handle that? So if someone comes from North Carolina to Virginia, yes. we, we, we uh, sign them up for Medicaid okay. in Virginia. And so then, then we have a provider who is close to our center who sees our and don't charge the guys anything to come see them. So that's how their prescriptions and yep. their medical conditions are managed. Yep, and okay. then we pay for prescriptions. Say if you come in, you got a $5 prescription, you can't pay for it, we yep. pay for that. Okay. All right.
Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. So, uh, just wanted to come in on the back side of that and explain where we are on the zoning side of this. Um, the model that they have right now uh, does not meet the requirements of our code. Um, so they're going to go through the text amendment process, and I'm working with Rick right now on what that's going to look like. So they'll probably be back before council uh, requesting an amendment to the code um, to allow them to do something uh, along these lines. So you'll probably be seeing this again uh, this fall. I have a concern. Um, I know that there's no parking on Union Street. Years ago, my husband came and spoke to you, and it wasn't passed that you couldn't park. And then we were told a few years later that we couldn't park on our road in front of our house. And mind you, my, my driveway's very short, and I have nowhere to go but just park two cars, maybe four if they're, you know, a smaller size. So we didn't abuse the fact that we're not supposed to park on the road. We would have birthday parties and Christmas Eve. It was all family that would come in. So we never abused it. Now there is a towing sign. So that, and, you know, there's a sign up now. And I'm not a rule breaker. But I want family to come to my house. I want to be able to have a cookout. I want to be able to have Christmas Eve with my family at my house. And right now, I can't do that because no one can park in front of my house. I understand the issue of no parking, but we never abused it. And now, I can't have my family over. We don't have enough room to park. We never abused it. There may be three cars, four in the driveway. I have my family over on Christmas Eve. They leave. Cars leave. They leave by 11 o'clock at the latest. Mm -hmm. But now, I want my family to be able to come see me. And I can't because there's a sign that says that the, of my car, the cars will be towed. And I feel real funny with that sign and then having a car park. And my mom. She'll park, run in. Well, she can't run now, but she, she'll come in and give me something and then leave. And if we have four cars already in the driveway, she would park in the front. She never abused it. And, you know, you could say, well, they could park at the old Legion building. What if it's pouring down rain? My father-in-law is older than my mom. He can't walk. My daughter has a baby having to carry a baby and all this stuff, you know, from a distance. So I have a concern. I want my family to be able to come over on birthdays so that I can bake a cake and have them over and sing happy birthday. I want to be able to have Christmas Eve. I don't do Thanksgiving at my house, so that's not an issue. It's at another house. But please let me have my family over and not be breaking a rule to do that. Please, I, I would appreciate it. So, Ms. we spoke before the meeting. Um, it's a no parking sign, which it's always been no parking through there. The signs were ordered, both Union and Boyd are no parking all the way through. Uh, it, it was posted public hearing and whatnot. But we spoke before the meeting. I, I, I'm not so certain that it's been an issue. So it's something that maybe we can talk about after the fact. Yeah. Thank you. Does anyone else like to speak? If not, we're going to move right along. You have before you the consent agenda item, which consists of the finance officer's report for the month of August. I move we approve the finance officer's report as presented. I have a motion. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion is carried unanimous. New business, paving study. Good evening, Mayor Council. Thank you. 
Uh, come before you tonight, uh, as many, many of you may, may remember, uh, we originally, or Maiden originally done a paving study back in 2015. Uh, the uh, thought process there was to use that paving study to prioritize street improvements, paving improvements, sidewalk improvements, um, uh, and so forth there. Um, since 2015, obviously we're going on 10 years. Um, since 2015, a lot of the streets in town have deteriorated at a lot faster rate uh, than others. Um, some of them were way down on the paving list, uh, probably now need to be toward the top. So uh, come before you tonight, uh, this money is in the budget. We've talked about it during the budget process, but just wanted an approval from council to move forward with updating our 2015 paving study. and. Uh, Thought process after the paving study is complete, probably around December, January. We will take the uh, results of the study, prioritize the streets that need paving. Tracy and I have talked a little bit about possibly delaying spring paving until the fall. What our thought process is there, we could double up on our PAL bill funds, use what we have this year, plus what we get in July <clears throat> in order to do a bigger fall paving project course with any contractor project you get more bang for your buck uh, tonnage price per ton goes down you know mobilization kills you on small projects so um, we'll put a couple thoughts together there in the spring and see where we are and see if we need to move forward with a spring project or possibly delay and, and doubling up in the fall so, good. Good. So, just need an approval tonight head nod from the council just to move forward with uh, um, updating a 2015 paving study. Once again, this was pre-approved. Uh, Brian had a good idea of bringing this forward to get the ball rolling. I think there's some roads that need some attention, and we talked about it, but uh, he's all over it, and I, I'm, I'm thinking it's a good idea. We need a motion. So yep. I make a motion that we move forward in doing the paving study. I have a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion is carried unanimous. Thank you. Tracy asked me to give one more update yes. or... Uh, or uh, while I'm up here, um, we've talked, seems like Ronnie's mentioned it a year ago, uh, about doing something to the loose railroad panels on West Main Street. Um, been working with DOT, uh, talking through the process. They have started uh, replacing some of those panels throughout the county. I think recently, last week, they were working on a prison camp road up there. Um, they do have us on the radar. Uh, but, but just like a lot of projects with DOT, they want something in return. Um, several years ago, uh, the town planted some um, Bradford right. pears on North Carolina, across from the funeral home. Um, since then, trees have gotten bigger. They have encroached upon the railroad right away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they have requested that we trim those trees off the railroad right away or cut them down. So if you guys will kind of put that on your radar, just kind of go by there and look at it. Uh, give me a head nod. You think we can trim them? I think if we trim them, they're going to look absolutely horrible. Mm -hmm. um, take them down. But just go by there and look at them and let Tracy know, uh, yeah, okay, to cut them, move forward with cutting them down or, or what your thought process is there. Um, Another thing, uh, when they're talking about replacing those panels, and we're going to have to work through it. There's a lot of moving parts here. But once they replace those panels, we're talking about a two-day detour. And uh, in, in no way do I want to have a two-day detour going through the middle school uh, area down there. Um, that would be uh, North Sea Cemetery. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of moving parts here, but um, first off, we've got to decide whether we're going to trim the trees or cut them down. And, Kind of get the ball rolling with DOT. When you say we, does that mean the town going to do it, or are we going to contract that out? Uh, we'll probably contract out the tree trim, yeah. <laughs> Especially if we cut them down, yeah. One get ice storm on Bradford Paris. <laughs> <It's laughs> They're not going to last it. anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually had one break during the winter storm not long ago. Yeah. <clears throat> so just let Tracy know on that thoughts. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. We should only mess up the one we're trying to do here with the tree. All right, ordinances and resolutions, <clears throat> 9A, ordinance 05-2025, oh, 
an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2024-2025 budget in the general fund police department. This year, the police department, and I believe every year, receives a donation from Meadow Ridge Church toward their school supply drive. Um, it is given to us in the form of a check, so this is just to bring those funds in and allow the police department to expend those for the um, school supply drive. I make a motion we approve ordinance 05-2025. So a motion. Second. And a second. <clears throat> All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. All opposed say no. Motion is carried unanimous. <clears throat> ordinance 06-2025, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2024-2025 budget and the rate stabilization fund. Back, I believe, at the May meeting, it was brought up that we sold uh, the generation of some power, surplus power, at the Catawba plant. Um, and that we would receive that as a credit on our July bill. That did come through, it hit the bank. The total of that was a little over 1.5 million, but of course they did take the July bill amount out of that. So the total um, to add to rate stabilization is $1,086,091.15. So this is just to bring those in and apply it to rate stabilization where they will sit for many years. Okay. Motion to approve 0625. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion is carried unanimous. Ordinance 07-2025, ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2024-2025 budget and the general fund IT salaries. This is the last one I swear. Um, back during the budgeting process, it was noticed that this was estimated incorrectly. Um, so the IT salaries will fall short with what is in there currently. Um, so this is just to allow IT to continue getting paid. We need to add 9222 to their budget. I move we approve ordinance 07-2025. have a motion. Second. <coughs> Second. All in favor say aye. Uh, all opposed say no. Motion is carried unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Jess. Right, number 10, proclamation proclaiming September 11th, 2024 as 9-11 Day of Remembrance in the town of Maiden. <clears throat> Whereas September 11, 2024 marks the 23rd anniversary of the tragic events that unfolded on September 11, 2020, or 2001, forever known as 9-11. Whereas on that fateful day, the United States of America experienced unprecedented acts of terrorism resulting in the loss of thousands of innocent lives and causing immense grief and <clears throat> devastation across the nation. Whereas the town of Maiden recognized the significance of this solemn occasion and enduring impact as it had on our country, as well as the resilience and unity demonstrated by Americans in the face of adversity and. Whereas we must remember and honor the victims who perished in the attacks along with the brave first responders, military personnel, and everyday heroes who selflessly risked their lives to save others, and whereas 9-11 Day of Remembrance serves as a time for reflection, unity, renewal, reminding us of the importance of cherishing our freedom, standing together as a community, and working towards a better future, and whereas the Town of Maiden recognizes the importance of educating future generations about the events of 9-11, ensuring that the memory of those who lost their lives remains alive and that the lessons learned from this tragedy continue to resonate with us all. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Max Bumgarner Jr., does hereby proclaim September 11, 2024, as 9-11 Day of Remembrance in the town. Motion to go into closed session. The motion would go to closed session. I have a motion. Second. 
Second. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion is carried unanimous. We'll be back here in just a little while. 